And next tonight, a giant experiment has been underway in America. In the last 10 years, there's been a huge 74% rise in young women donating their eggs so that strangers can have babies. And a lot of them were recruited because they're well-educated or because of the way they look. So we decided to look more deeply into this exploding trend. Do we really know the consequences? Nightline co-anchor Cynthia McFadden investigates. We know how valuable healthy donor eggs can be. $5,000, $10,000 if you're Asian, says this ad. And guess what, if you're a model with all that implies, $50,000. Does it make you nervous? Um, I think by this point it's my sixth time. I, I don't really get nervous anymore. 29-year-old Anna Kane is a freelance writer who says she's made over $60,000 as a donor. So as far as you're concerned, there's no reason not to do this? No. Good. You ready? Yes. Today is egg retrieval day, the culmination of weeks of hormone injections to stimulate her ovaries into producing more eggs than normal. Dr. Joel Batsafin is her doctor. Is egg donation essentially risk-free as far as you're concerned? Nothing is risk-free. There's anesthesia, there's risk of the procedure. But I, I, I think the right answer is yes, it's essentially risk-free. Dr. Batsafin mentions there is a rare condition found in less than 1% of patients, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Hey. So it's six o'clock. Twenty-seven-year-old Emma Smith, not his patient, was so sick with it she spent six days in the hospital and shot this video diary. I feel that they should have gone out of their way to make me a bit more aware of any possible side effects in the actual process and everything like that. Dr. Jennifer Schneider worries there is no national egg donor registry to track what happens to this exploding group of young women donating their eggs. Her daughter, Jessica, was a three-time egg donor who died at 31 of colon cancer. The egg donors are not considered patients. They're considered more like vendors. Dr. Schneider wonders if the repeated hormone injections fuel cancer in some way, even though studies suggest there is no proof infertility treatments cause cancer. But we were shocked to discover there has never been, not even one, long-term study of egg donors. And it doesn't worry you that there haven't really been good studies done following egg donors? Not yet. Not really. Anna says she loves the idea she's already helped create three sets of twins and hopes there'll be more. What we can say right now is there are no known long-term medical issues for donors, which is, of course, a world of difference from saying no long-term issues. Follow-up donor studies could help, Diane. No national database on this? Nothing. Unbelievable. Okay, thank you, Cynthia.